In this video, we will explore the new Excel command action released in version 5 of EasyMorph. We'll do this in the context of a basic management performance review process. Before we tackle the workflow, let's check out our underlying data. Here we have our source data in an Excel spreadsheet. We have reviewers reviewing a number of managers across 11 dimensions. And we need to generate, first of all, a mean score for all dimensions going across for each review. Okay, then we'll need mean scores for all dimensions going across plus that new mean score for each manager. Okay, our next tab is the list of managers. These are the managers being reviewed and each one will receive a report at the end of this process. We're listing the manager ID and the manager's name. You'll notice that some of the manager IDs are highlighted yellow and this will come into play a little bit later in the workflow. You'll see what we do with those. And now on the key tab, we have a translation of the dimension number, the generic number used in the data, and the actual category label, the title that we want at the top of the columns at the end of the workflow. Next up, we have the report template file. And you'll notice, well, actually, no, you can't quite see it up here, that this is an XLSM file, meaning this is the report template the recipient of the final data, uh, as well as the holder of the macros that will be triggering using the Excel command action. Okay, our first tab, the data tab, is where the results for a single manager, uh, the current manager that we are running a report for, will end up in this format. We have the manager ID, the manager name, the file name that will be produced by EasyMorph, as well as the final mean scores for all 11 dimensions the final mean score overall score, basically the mean of the mean. And this flag at the end is indicating whether this is a new manager this year. This is the first time they've had a performance review or not. It will be either true or false. Okay, the report template is pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, the manager ID will land here, the name here, that overall mean of mean score will end up in the large box. Each individual dimension score will end up in here. We have conditional formatting in these cells to highlight green or red if they fall within a certain range or remain white if they stay kind of in the middle range. Uh, we also have a chart in the middle that will populate as these scores fill in. Okay, now we are back at the workflow. And as a heads up, um, there are a number of actions involved in this workflow, and I am not going to go through in, in great detail each and every single action and its settings. Uh, I will click on each one so the settings appear to the left. If you want to check out the settings, feel free to pause the video at any time, review the settings yourself, and then continue on. Um, as for now, I'm just going to step through the workflow and explain kind of what each action does uh, in each step. So we start by reading in the manager list from that data file that we saw earlier. Okay, I apply a filter here for testing. Um, if I will only want to select one or two managers or a small group to run through, um, I can. If you only need to run certain managers at a time, you can turn this filter on and, and select the ones you wanna run or leave the filter off and run the full batch. I have this disabled since I've already run the test, it works so I don't really need this filter in play. And the final action here is the iterate. So what this is doing is this is going to pass each manager ID manager name combo into the calculate module where all the magic happens. So these are going to run one manager report at a time, come back out to here, iterate the next manager, go back into the calculate module, produce the next report, and so forth. So let's take a look at the calculate module. We're now in the calculate module, which does all of the processing and report generation for uh, this workflow. And we'll start from the very left and work our way across. Um, first of all, the iterate action from out in the main workflow is passing in the manager ID and manager name as parameters. The first step in here is to read in the raw data from that Excel spreadsheet we saw earlier. 
Uh, we're going to filter it by the manager code that we're using. We're going to create that mean score at the very end. This is an average of all the scores going across the row. We're now going to aggregate all values up into a single mean score for each of the 11 dimensions plus that final score at the end. Okay, we're going to unpivot the data so it's in a columnar fashion. Uh, we're now going to round each value to a single decimal place. We're going to drop the initial data and then we're going to pivot it back into a row. At this point, we're going to derive the data set into two branches. Um, we have kind of a, a special need up here, so we're going to run this little single action. This is our first Excel command action, and it is passing in the manager ID code and running a function. Uh, this is a VBA macro function uh, called check for new. And what this is going to do is this is going to check uh, on that one sheet in the Excel file, uh, the manager list to see if the manager code has been highlighted yellow or not. If it is, this function will return true. If it's not highlighted yellow, this function will return false. Let's take a look at the function uh, that we're working with. Uh, check for new receives the manager ID. Uh, we dimension our variables out. We set some object references. Okay. And we are looking for that manager ID within that small manager uh, list table that we saw earlier. Uh, when we find it, and we will, because it came from the table, so it has to be in the table, or we set the range to where it was found. Okay, uh, if the color is this value, is the yellow that was being used, then this is true, otherwise it is false. So if that cell is yellow, we get a true. If there was no highlighting in that cell, we get a false. So at this point, we will have a true or false value here in this output field from the first Excel command action. Okay, down here in the bottom branch, we are pulling in the data set from up here. We are reordering some columns. We are pulling in the manager name from the parameter. We are generating the file name, the final file name of the PDF file, uh, based on the manager ID plus the name plus some static text. Okay, we're going to rename the columns using uh, this source data key tab um, as a lookup table. Okay, in this step, we are now peeking in this true or false value from up above. Okay, that's that flag at the very end of the data we saw back in the Excel file. Okay, then we're going to rename that column to new flag from output. So that is that is the core. That is the engine of generating the data for the report and laying that data out, transforming it, shaping it uh, to what it needs to be in order to insert it into the uh, Excel file. Okay, now we're in the run report group. At the bottom, there are two tabs in the calculate module. Okay, we are reading in the final data set from the previous step. Okay, we're now going to insert this data into um, that Excel sheet, the, uh, the report file, okay, to update the data that will next feed the report. Okay, the final step is we are running another Excel command, and we are running a macro called run reports. Let's take a moment to peek in on the macro that we're running here to see how it is running these reports. Again, we are setting up our variables. Uh, we are setting object references. Okay, we are grabbing some of the data values and assigning them to variables. Okay, everything in this report is using a named range, so you won't see actual cell references, A2, B1. Um, instead, we're gonna be using names, uh, name labels for the ranges. Uh, so first we're going to insert the manager ID and the manager name, where they belong on the report template. Then we're going to cycle through the 12 data values, the 11 dimensions, plus that one final score. Uh, so we'll be running a loop, 1 through 12. Each pass through, it's going to select the next value along the chain here and use that as the range name to insert that data value. 
Okay, once we're done with that, we're then going to interpret uh, the flag value at the end, the true or false. Uh, and that is going to determine whether a flag appears on the final report next to the manager name. Um, a new means that the manager was just recently hired. This is their first performance review. Uh, the flag not showing means they were here previously and have had a previous performance review. And that all happens down here. Uh, flag is true. Then we get the flag. Okay, if the true false flag is false, then we clear that cell just to make sure there's not any lingering formatting going on in there. Second to last step is we actually export it as a PDF file with the appropriate file name, and then we clear the template for the next run. Okay, back out on the main module, uh, let's get this thing running. Uh, just a note ahead of time, uh, if you're running the Excel command action, uh, make sure all of your Excel files are saved and closed before running this. You will get an error in the background saying that EasyMorph can't access the Excel files that you're running on. So all files have been closed and saved and we will reload and run. Okay, now that all the reports have run, let's take a look at them. Okay, here we go. We have all of the 15 PDFs, one for each manager, uh, neatly named with manager ID, name, and static text. Uh, let's see what some of these look like. Okay, let's check Stella. Okay, same thing with Stella, mid-range for the final score. Um, some higher scores, a lot of mid-range scores, and one lower score. Again, ID, name, no flag. Okay, let's see if I can find the one that has the flag. There we go, okay. Uh, we now have Alex Manager 3 who has the new flag at the end of his name. Meaning this is his, he was just hired within the past year, this is his first performance review, so he gets the flag. Okay, some high scores, a lot of mid-range scores, final mid-range score, and note, this came from the highlighting in the Excel file. So with the Excel command action in conjunction with an Excel function that can read formatting, bolding, underlining, italics, uh, color coding, uh, borders, you name it, uh, you can extract value from that formatting that you normally wouldn't be able to in EasyMore since it just deals with raw data. Okay, so we, we found the highlight, okay, we converted it to a flag, to a true-false, and then we use that to drive something in the report. So that is the complete workflow. Um, so within here, we use the Excel command action in a couple different ways. First, to trigger an Excel VBA function to pass in a value, retrieve a return value, and remember that function returned a value based on formatting in the Excel sheet. So you can convert formatting in an Excel sheet to a value that EasyMorph can use. Okay. And the second time we triggered the Excel command action was to run a full-blown subroutine that inserted the data into the report and then exported that report as a PDF file. So that's the Excel command action, new in EasyMorph version five, uh, that successfully connects the world of EasyMorph to the world of Microsoft VBA uh, through Excel. Uh, so from Excel VBA, you can then tap into Word, PowerPoint Access, uh, all the other Office applications. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to join the EasyMorph community. Uh, leave them there. There's tons of people are looking in on that all the time. I'm sure someone will be around. I might be around. Uh, or the EasyMorph crew might be around to, uh, to answer your questions. Uh, thank you.